Hello everyone, welcome to Think Computer YouTube channel. So in this video we will discuss about mathematical library methods in Java. So let's begin. So mathematical library methods are some inbuilt methods which are available in the Java language and all of these methods are included in the math class which is part of the java.lang package. Now whenever we write any Java program, we do not include the java.lang means we do not write import java.lang because it is a by default package which is added. So whenever we make any Java program, the compiler adds the java.lang package by default and math.class is part of that only. So the basic syntax to use any method of math class is math dot and then the method name. So there are many methods available under the math class, but I have included only the commonly used ones. So min, max, pow, sqrt, cbrt, abs, round, seal, floor and random. We'll discuss all of these now one by one. So the first two methods are math.min and math.max. Min function returns the minimum between any two given numbers and max function returns the maximum between any two given numbers. The return type for these two methods are int, long, float or double. Why four data types? Because the return type depends on what type of value you are passing to the method. Suppose you are passing integers, then the return type will be integer. Suppose you are passing float, then the return type will be float. Similarly, if you are passing double, then the return type will be double. Now, what if you are passing one parameter as integer and one parameter as double, then it will return double. Suppose you are passing one parameter as long and one parameter as double, then it will return double. Now how that is working? That is working as per the hierarchy of data types. Okay, now as per the hierarchy, int and then long and then float and then double. So double has the highest priority. So if you mix up these two type of data types in the parameter, then the return value will be according to the higher data type. Okay, as per the hierarchy. So let's see some examples. Suppose uh, we say x is 100, y is 20 and z is 220. In the first example, mat.max x comma y, so that is 120, maximum it will return 100. Minimum y comma z, that is 20 and 220, the minimum between these two will be 20. And we can also use in a nested form this way. So mat.max x comma mat.max y comma z, first it will use the inner function and compare y and z, return the maximum between these two. So y and z that is 20 and 220, the maximum will be 220 and x comma 220 where x is 100. So maximum between 100 and 220 will be returned as 220 only. By the way, these are the comment lines. Okay. These are single line comments slash I have written. Now these are single line comments. Okay. Now we cannot use a single min function or single max function to compare uh, between more than two values, but we can use in nested form this way. Now, more examples are here, mat.max 40.4 comma 40.78. So maximum between these two, it will return 40.78, right? And 125.3, it's returning 25.3 because minimum is 25.3. Now, if you see the last example carefully, 40 comma 10.5, here maximum it is returning. It is supposed to return 40, but it is returning 40.0. Like I said, one of the parameter is double and other one is integer. So it is returning in double because double is the higher data type. No matter if that is the result or not, but the value, the result will be converted into double. Mat.pow. So it returns the power raised to a given base value and the return type is double always. For example, mat.pow 10 comma 2. So here 10 comma 2 means 10 square. So it will return 100.0, the return type is double. Then mat.pow, mat.pow 2 comma 3 bracket comma 2. So here I have used it in a nested form. First the inner one will execute. So 2 comma 3 that is 2 cube that will return 8.0 and then mat.pow 8.0 comma 2 that is 8.0 square that will return 64.0. Next two are mat.sqrt and mat.cbrt. So sqrt returns the square root of any given number and cbrt returns the cube root of any given number. Both of these functions return in double data type. But the point to note is that sqrt function can only work with positive numbers, 
वेर एज सी बी आर टी फंक्शन कैन वर्क विद बोथ पॉजिटिव एंड नेगेटिव नंबर दिस इज बिकॉज इफ यू ट्राई टू फाइंड आउट द स्क्वायर रूट ऑफ एनी नेगेटिव नंबर दैट इज इमेजिनरी नंबर राइट सो इफ यू ट्राई टू फाइंड आउट इन प्रोग्रामिंग यूजिंग एस क्यू आर टी देन इट विल बी अ रन टाइम एर एंड इट विल शो ऑन द स्क्रीन एन ए एन मीन्स नॉट अ नंबर सम एग्जाम्पल्स हैव गिवन सो इफ आई राइट मैट डॉट एस क्यू आर टी सिक्सटीन इट इज रिटर्निंग फोर पॉइंट जीरो दैट इज द स्क्वायर रूट ऑफ सिक्सटीन If I am writing mat dot CBRT 64, then also it is returning 4.0 because the cube root of 64 is 4.0. If I am trying suppose square root of minus 5, then it is a runtime error and showing NaN. Like I said, it will not work with negative numbers. If I write mat dot SQRT 10, then it is returning 3.16227766016. That's the exact value after square root. And if I do CBRT that is minus 64.0. Zeros uh, cube root, then it will return minus 4.0. Next is math dot abs. So abs returns the absolute value of any number. Absolute value means it will return the same number but after removing the minus sign. If the number is negative, then it will remove the minus sign. It will make it a positive number. And if the number is positive number, it will return the same number. Okay, so it will not react to any positive number. and the return type is int float long and double that means same as min and max function the return type depends on what type of value you are passing to the function so some examples if i write mat dot abs of x x is integer and it is minus 100 so if i pass minus 100 then the output will be 100 it will convert it to a positive number so negative number will get converted to positive number but if i write mat dot abs of y where y is 200 it's a positive number only and it will return the same value no changes if i write mat dot abs of z where z is 2.5 positive number and a double value so it will return 2.5 so abs function will not react to positive numbers it will return the same number and if the number is negative then it will just return the same number but after removing the minus sign from the number next is mat dot round so this one is very important because the rule for the mat dot round is bit complicated so understand very carefully so round function returns the value of the number rounded to its nearest integer and when i say nearest integer i am not following the number line okay i'll explain to you so return type is long remember this it's not integer it's not double it's not float the return type for mat dot round is always long so for positive numbers there is a different rule for negative numbers there is a different rule for positive numbers if the decimal part of the number is less than 0.5 then it returns the same integer number otherwise it returns the next integer number for negative numbers if the decimal part of the number is up to 0.5 then it returns the same integer number otherwise it returns the next integer number I have plenty of examples, but before that, the rule I have written here also. So for reference, let's start the examples uh, one by one. So mat dot round two point five. Now here the decimal part of the number is point five. These all are positive numbers. Okay, these all are positive numbers, and after that we have negative. So two point five, the decimal part of the number is point five, which is point five or higher than point five, right? So it will return the next number three. Next means after two, what is there? Next. After two is three, not following the number line, just counting wise. After two, three, so three will come. Then two point nine nine, the decimal part is obviously point five or higher than point five, right? So it will return the next number that is three. Now if you see two point four nine, the decimal part is less than point five, then it is going to return the same number. So two will only get returned. Okay, five point six seven, so the decimal part is point six seven, which is higher than or equal to point five. It will return the next number six. 0.5100 so here the decimal part is 0.5100 which is obviously 0.5 or higher than 0.5 so it will return the next number after 0 the next number is 1 0.499999 so decimal part is less than 0.5 it will return the same number 0 if the number is not having any decimal part like this example it is 10 it will return 10 only If the number is fifteen point zero, again point zero will not be considered as a you know have a number having a decimal part. Point zero it will be just like not having a decimal part only. So it will return the same number as it is. Now if it is hundred point one two three four, so the decimal part is point one two three four, which is less than point five. So it will return the 
same number that is 100 only 0.5 the decimal part is 0.5 or higher than 0.5 right so next number 1 now we'll see the negative numbers now and the second rule to follow for the negative numbers so decimal part up to 0.5 same number higher than 0.5 next number okay and we are not following number line for this function round so minus 2.5 the decimal part is 0.5 means up to 0.5 so it will be the same number so it will return minus 2 only minus 5.10 the decimal part is 0.10 which is up to 0.5 means in that range so it will return the same number minus 5 but if we see this example minus 9.99 the decimal part is 0.99 which is obviously higher than you know 0.5 so it will return the next number now after 9 it will return 10 i'm not following number line okay so after 9 what comes 10 so it will return minus 10 okay then minus 157 there is no decimal part it will return the same number then minus 25.25 the decimal part is less than 0.5 less than equal to 0.5 right so it will return the same number then minus 0.199 uh, okay so minus 0.99 the decimal part is 0.99 which is obviously higher than 0.5 so it will return the next number so after 0 next is 1 so it will return minus 1 Minus zero point two five. The decimal part is less than point five, less than equal to point five, right? So it will return the same number. But isn't it supposed to return minus zero? But it will not return minus zero. It will return zero only because minus zero, no such thing as minus zero, right? Then minus zero point seven. The decimal part is point seven, which is higher than point five. So it will return the next number after zero one. So it will return minus one. Minus zero point four one nine. The decimal part is point four one nine, which is less than equal to point five, right? So it will return the same number zero, but it will not be minus zero. It will be zero only. Minus twenty seven point two eight. The decimal part is less than equal to point five, so it will return the same number minus twenty seven. The next two functions are mat dot seal and mat dot floor. Both of these functions will return in double data type. and both of these function follow the number line so i have drawn a number line over here for reference so seal will return the higher integer number and floor will return the lower integer number higher means the next one and lower means the previous one so these are the examples seal of 5.5 so higher than 5.5 is 6.0 please follow number line for seal function and floor function Seal of 2.99 higher than 2.99 is 3.0. Then seal of 20.01 higher than 20.01 is 21.0 means the next number. Seal of minus 10.5 then higher than minus 10.5 is minus 10.0. Why minus 10.0? It's a negative number. So in negative minus 10.0 is higher than minus 10.5 means the result has to be higher than the exact value in the seal function. So seal of 5.0 will return 5.0. There is no decimal part. 0.0 is not considered, so it's going to return the same number. Seal of 15, so it will return 15.0 only. All the results will be converted into double. Okay. Seal of 5.99 minus 5.99. It's a negative number, so it will return minus 5.0 because minus 5.0 is greater than minus 5.99. Then floor. Now floor means lower value, following the number line. So 5.55 floor is 5.0 because 5.0 is lower than 5.5. Floor of 2.99 is 2.0. Again, 2.0 is lower than 2.99. 20.01 one floor will be 20.0 because it is lower than 20.01. Now negative. So minus 10.5 lower is minus 11.0. That is lower than minus 10.5. 5.0 it will not react. It will return the same number. 15 it will return the same number. Just 0.0 will be added. And minus 5.99 lower than that is minus 6.0. So floor is always returning the lower value following the number line, and seal is always returning the higher value again following the number line. The last function that we'll discuss is mat dot random. Okay, mat dot random generates a random number between 0 to 0.9999. Okay, and return type is double. These are two formulas which you can use in any program. Okay, if you want to generate random number, the first formula can be used to generate a random number between one to n, and the second formula can be used to generate a random number between a to b. Okay, now uh, what is random number? Well, a random number is a number which you cannot guess. Means the computer will use this formula, this function which is present, random function, and this formula to generate a number which you cannot predict. And using this random function, you can even create some games also. 
even uh, nowadays schools and colleges are using the lottery system for admission and the software which they are using that is also following a similar kind of logic like mad dot random okay so now how to check if your uh, code the code which you have written for generating random number is working or not suppose we are talking about the first formula that is to generate a random number between 1 to n let's say if n is 10 so i want to generate a random number between 1 to 10 i want to check if my formula is correct this is my formula i want to check if the formula is correct or not i have to check with the minimum outcome of random function and i have to check with the maximum outcome of the random function if my formula is giving the correct result with the minimum value of random and the maximum value of random then the formula is correct so if i talk about the min case minimum case so minimum the math dot random function can return is zero now if it returns zero so zero into ten is zero in integer that is zero only plus one is one so if the random function returns zero then my formula is returning one which is the minimum in my range i want to generate between one to ten similarly the maximum mat dot random can generate is 0 0.9999 okay if i multiply that with 10 i get 9.9999 okay and in integer that is 9 9 plus 1 is 10 so you see that the formula which i have given you right now is able to generate for the minimum and for the maximum of my range then whatever random value it will generate because it is between 0 to 0 0.999 so minimum I can get 0, maximum I can get 0 0.999, but any value that comes in between of that will be in the range of 1 to 10. So this formula is working for generating the random number between 1 to 10. Let's see for the second formula also one example. Suppose we talk about the second formula, the, the one I showed you before, okay, and I want to generate a random number between 20 to 50. So here A is 20 and B is 50, okay, and this is the formula. So I have just substituted, uh, you know, the values of a and b in the place of the formula. So 50 minus 20 plus 1 plus 20. So 50 minus 20 plus 1 is 31. Now let's talk about the min case and the max case. Min case means when the random generates 0, random function generates 0. And max case means when it generates 0 0.999. So if it generates 0, so 0 into 31 will be 0. In integer that is 0. Plus 20 will be 20. So my function gives me 20 now. My formula is working and if it generates 0 0.999 the maximum into 31 that is 30.999 right and in integer that will be 30 30 plus 20 is 50 so for minimum value of random also my formula is giving me the minimum value of my range and for the maximum also my formula is giving the maximum of my range so that's all for today's video thank you for watching stay tuned to think computer